Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Global Tech TV Podcast. And today we are trying uh, something new. We are recording a special episode uh, at the end of the AWS reInvent uh, 2025, uh, 24, sorry, <laughs> and, uh, and looking ahead for the next year. But Eyal, uh, uh, you always follow this event. You are a big uh, um, geek of uh, cloud, and uh, I will let you uh, start. Thank you. Um, so as, as this is a special event, I even wore my uh, T-shirt that I got in uh, one of the previous reInvent, maybe it was in 2019. It was for 30, Amazon certified uh, people. Um, anyway, um, before I'm talking about uh, what were the announcements, part of them general availability, general part of them are preview, uh, what were the announcements that I believe were the most uh, let's call it cool or amazing uh, announcements. I would like to share something personal. Um, as you mentioned, I've been watching uh, the keynotes from reInvent in the past several years now. I even attended uh, two of them uh, a few years ago. And um, my personal recommendation for anyone who is either a developer or enjoys new uh, learning about new technology, the deep, uh, deep insights of technology, I always encourage you to listen to the, or watch the recording of um, Dr. Werner Vogels, the Amazon CTO. His keynotes, they always share a lot of insights from how uh, Amazon builds their systems, um, things that are not really openly shared. And um, last year he was talking about the frugal architect, um, mainly talking about how to put cost as part of the um, requirements for a new system when we develop a new system. And this year he, he talks about a, con, uh, um, a term called simplexity, like on one side simple, on one side pretty complex systems that we're developing over the years. Um, he shared in his lecture last night um, lessons about complexity. How do you, what are, you, what are your um, warning signs? When you have a system, how do you detect it? See, way too complex and how to break it down and how to build what is called evolvable systems, meaning a lot of um, context of, um, for example, uh, modeled in business concept, hidden internal details, uh, fine-grained interface. There are ma many um, concepts when we're building evolvable systems and this is like the future of how to build modern applications. So I highly recommend you to uh, look for the video in uh, YouTube. So this is my uh, 10 I cents can, before. I can, before talk, I, I can talk a lot about cloud, uh, but I, I just want to say that I I try to build a, a, like some kind of managed service and I call it simplex because the cloud has a lot of benefits but I think because the the reach, the, 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 the amount of services and the amount of features, it became sometimes really difficult to manage, really difficult to decide. So I, I, I will try to find it because I was talking it before uh, the CTO of Amazon, but uh, <laughs> I believe that uh, that it's true that we need to think about doing the, 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 the things uh, simpler than, than, you know, just doing the cool stuff, because at the end, we need to manage the, the these applications and, and this uh, infrastructure. So, yeah. I'll, uh... And by the way, the, the bottom line is not just deploying or developing a system, it's also how to do so in a very complex way, in a high scale. Mm -hmm. so maybe it's not relevant for all customers or for all organizations, but there are many organizations developing very highly scalable systems. Just consider about uh, Netflix, for example, the complexity in this system, in their system, Facebook, um, whatever you can think of, they're very complex systems. So yeah. a lot of a lot of insights. I highly recommend you to, to watch the the this uh, lecture. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, moving on, uh, there there are many many announcements um, in in this week in in uh, reInvent twenty twenty four. Uh, I've specifically selected three of them from completely three uh, domains. So the first one is called the next generation of Amazon SageMaker. AWS has announced the next generation of Amazon SageMaker, a unified platform for data analytics and AI. Uh, the new version um, integrates various AWS machine learning and analytics capabilities, offering a collaborative environment 
for teams to build faster using familiar AWS tools. Um, some of the key features in this specific announcement or integration of services, uh, the Amazon SageMaker Unified Studio, which is currently just uh, released in, in preview. Um, it's a single development environment that combines functionality from various AWS services like Amazon EMR, Glue, Redshift, Bedrock, the machine learning, and existing SageMaker Studio. Uh, another another uh, feature is the Amazon SageMaker Lake House. Again, another capability, as far as I can recall, it was announced and it's currently under GA. It's an open data architecture that reduced data silos and unified data across S3 data lakes, Redshift data warehouse and third-party sources. It supports Apache Iceberg compatible tools and engine. And another feature of the, uni the next generation of Amazon SageMaker is the Amazon SageMaker data and AI governance, which includes Amazon SageMaker catalog built uh, on Amazon DataZone, uh, enabling secure discovery, governance, and collaboration on data and AI workflows. And in the show notes of this uh, episode, we'll also add some links so you can uh, read more information about this new announcement. And, and it is interesting because the, the, the SageMaker was launched in 2017. So yeah. after seven years, okay. They... So, 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 so now that they looking like a different uh, way of using this tool, they say, okay, not, not just um, having different silos of machine learning or AI tools and data analytics. Now I say, let's combine everything to a unified um, service with all the subfamily, I believe they're also calling it uh, Amazon SageMaker AI. I saw mm -hmm. this also this week someplace. So, so uh, this news was around AI? Yeah. No, no, it, it was announced as part of both AI and data analytics. Okay. Um, so the next announcement that I would like to share about is the Amazon S3 metadata. This is a, a new, new capability of Amazon S3, which is currently a, in preview. The S3 metadata is a new feature designed to enhance data management and discovery in Amazon S3. This feature aims to simplify metadata management, improve data discovery, and enhance the overall utility of S3 data for various applications, including business analytics and real-time interface. The S3 metadata automatically captures and updates metadata from objects as they're uploaded into the bucket, creating a queryable uh, read-only table that reflects changes within minutes. Metadata tables are stored in S3 tables, a new storage offering optimized for tabular data. By the way, it was also announced in GA um, in reInvent. Mm -hmm. And S3 metadata integrates with Amazon Bedrock, their machine learning, allowing for annotation of AI generated content with metadata speci uh, specifying its origin, creation timestamp, and the model used. So for this uh, announcement, I'll also share in the show, in the show notes um, some additional reference materials you can read about. And the last um, service or evolvement of, of an existing service is called the Amazon uh, Aurora DSQL. I saw people are talking about how do you pronounce it? DSQL, DSQL, so let's just call it DSQL. Um, AWS has announced the preview, it's currently in the preview of Amazon Aurora DSQL, a new serverless distributed SQL database. Uh, by the way, it's Postgres uh, compatible mm -hmm. and designed for high availability and scalability. Uh, among the features of the Aurora DSQL uh, are virtually unlimited ho uh, horizontal scaling, meaning adding more compute nodes, uh, independent scaling of read, writes, compute, and storage. Uh, it has the fastest distributed SQL read and writes compared to, it, to the uh, regular Aurora SQL. It has no single point of failure, active-active distributed architecture, and the killing, killing feature it's strong consistency and durability for all read and writes to any regional endpoint. So, so far you always had the limitation. You could create a multi-region database or uh, using global tables, mm -hmm. but you always has an issue when you, you're working over um, long distance between two, two regions. So usually the, the way data was written was um, eventual consistency. 
What it means, let's say a customer updates a data in a record in a database, and another customer would like to read this information. It will take a few seconds, depending on the amount of data and the, the bandwidth between them, uh, for the data to be updated and replicated among all uh, copies of the data, among the storage and everything else. But uh, the new announcement that Amazon did was something that was I haven't seen in the past. Uh, the ability for strong consistency, meaning data is being automatically um, synchronized in a, I'm guessing, less than a second of, um, of time it takes to sync between the different nodes. Mm -hmm. And they managed to do it using a mechanism of um, time synchronization which basically is is built on top of uh, satellites, and and every EC2 instance since last year um, has a time clock that is synchronized automatically all across their all all regions worldwide in all their data centers. This allows the ability of the strong consistency. Um, so lastly, uh, Aurora DSQL uh, aims to simplify the development of always available application with high scalability and reliability, offering an effortless scaling and resiliency solution for database management. And for those of you who already been using the Amazon uh, Aurora, the, the previous generation, let's call it, the main differences between the Aurora SQL, the, the Aurora DSQL, uh, it enhanced distributed architecture, which allows greater scalability and availability compared to the original Aurora. While Aurora is um, already a high-performance option, Aurora DSQL takes this further by offering virtually unlimited horizontal scaling and higher availability guarantee, making it more suitable for extreme demanding mission-critical application that requires maximum scalability and uptime. So very long sentence that basically says, now we have a strong consistency, now we have less than a second of time sync of data between different regions. But as a, as a former DBA, it's amazing the the opportunities, the, the possibilities that you have in the database. Before 10 years, we had the 15 years maybe, we have Oracle and SQL Server, that was the, you know, 90, 95% of the market. And now even in Amazon, you have 20 or 15 uh, databases and every year comes something new. So what, what can I advise is to be smart choosing the right uh, database and look at the price of them, you know, because people like the 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 better, the, but you need to be, if uh, uh, reaching the former uh, Vogel uh, um, uh, keynote about the, the architecture, is really smart to, to plan ahead, let's say, and look at the money and the, the price. Yeah. Definitely look at both the, 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 the vendor documentation, by the way, it's relevant for all cloud providers, and also look at the price list. And only then try to understand if this is your right solution for your workload. Yeah. AI always explain better than me. Angie, what about you? Any news, um, any updates? Absolutely. Uh, I would love to keep my updates as usual very positive. Uh, how we can better bring security and secure all our systems. Uh, mainly most of my uh, announcements are going to be related towards security. One of them is towards Kubernetes. I think that uh, all of the experts uh, in the industry should be a bit scared from this announcement because we might be jobless after what Amazon has done this year. And uh, I would also love to wonder upon a bit uh, uh, VFC and uh, perhaps Amazon Security Lake. This For the past two years, I've really been interested in that. So without further ado, <laughs> I'd love to dive uh, upon Kubernetes. So Amazon uh, has one of uh, their best services, uh, EKS Automote. And this year, Amazon just made Kubernetes a whole lot easier and safer with EKS Automote. What is this feature and what is this announcement about? So basically this feature automates uh, cluster management, which not only saves time, but also minimizes the risk of those uh, pesky misconfigurations that can often lead to security issues. I think that this is perfect, especially for teams uh, that do not have Kubernetes experts, and it really gives them a way to deploy apps confidently and securely. 
I think that for everyone that's looking to simplify operations while staying secure, this is definitely a big win. On the other side, we have uh, VPC Lattice with private link enhancements. And uh, Amazon has yet brought uh, another surprise this year on uh, the reInvent event. Uh, this update is really huge for security, for every professional that's working with uh, multi-account setups. Uh, basically, VPC Lattice now supports TCP connections with private link. Uh, this is something new, uh, innovative, and it's going to really benefit a lot of professionals in security by making their life easier, easier to secure and uh, securely share their resources across accounts and VPCs. Uh, also, if I can put it in perspective for people who are not really technical, I would like to compare it as if it's like having a fortified highway for your data, where you can secure, streamline, and build for modern cloud architectures. I think that... Uh, if all the professionals and enthusiasts in the cloud and especially security are trying to manage complex networks, this feature is definitely a breath of fresh air for both uh, assuring flexibility and security. And last but not least, from uh, the big announcements of this year's reInvent in security, we have Security Lake. Uh, Amazon Security Lake is ready with their new specialization and for everyone wondering or for everyone who's uh, tired of juggling multiple security tools and dashboards on their daily workflow, I think that Amazon Security Lake is our new best friend. Uh, you'd like to ask, why is that? How can we... And you, why is that? Just this? <laughs> <laughs> AI, any question? <laughs> no, uh, just, just one comment. As far as I can recall, uh, the Amazon Security Lake was announced last year. As far yeah. as I can recall. I was also part, uh, when that was announced live, I was uh, uh, part of uh, AWS Israel there, uh, watching it live as uh, all the professionals were explaining it. It was really exciting. But this year it came with another, let's say, update, a new feature that uh, I think this feature is really going to bring all the security data in one place. This is really efficient and it's going to make threat detection faster and more efficient. I think it's like uh, another Another, another comparison I think that it would really suit to this new announcement is that it's like having a central hub for all your defenses. It can ensure you that you can react to threats before they even escalate. It's really important, especially for professionals that are on the defense part, uh, trying to prevent uh, all the messiness before it escalates. So I think that for uh, anyone that's uh, serious about proactive security, this uh, feature is definitely a must have. And Security Lake is a service that we should really take advantage of. Great. Amazing. I, I, I finally managed to, uh, I don't know if I understand and, and, and think about it, that I am not a tech person anymore. I, I do it with, uh, I'm sad to say that, let's say, but uh, what I did in this uh, reinvent is look at the big picture and uh, just was a, a post from uh, in LinkedIn of Matt Garman, the AWS CEO. I hope that I, I say his name right. And uh, he, he, they they did a, like a small uh, mini site uh, with uh, some kind of post uh, around the Vogel um, predictions uh, in the next uh, in the next year in uh, 2025. So uh, we will also add uh, this. Uh, there are five points uh, there. If, uh, if I remember right, and uh, and you know, he's a smart guy. He has a, a lot of uh, clients. He, they look the future, so I think that is really uh, interesting to see and uh, and uh, follow what uh, he, he writes. So uh, I hope that next year we will all be in uh, Vegas in this time. Uh, but if not, we will do also the recap uh, next year. I can try and promise that. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank Angie. Thank uh, Yal. And uh, as always, everybody is welcome to follow us in uh, all the places uh, that we are in every so uh, social media, Global Tech TV. Feel free to write, ask, and let's uh, talk uh, later, let's say. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. And uh, until the next one, bye-bye.